Ariana Grande calls out a misogynistic man who slammed Little Mix. There's a millennial version of Monopoly that literally nobody asked for. And we celebrate Twilight's 10th anniversary by asking, what would it look like if it was set in 2018? Here's all the news you need to know to hold your own at the water cooler this week. Game company Hasbro have released Millennial Monopoly, complete with the hashtag token, stops like Vegan Bistro in Parents' Basement, and the comforting tagline, forget real estate, you can't afford it anyway. Because just in case your massive overdraft isn't a reminder enough, there's always a small, old, wealthy, grey-haired man ready and eager to point out your financial woes. Thanks, rich uncle Pennybags. That's actually his name. Unsurprisingly, millennials are kicking off on Twitter about being reduced to a lazy stereotype. As Jake tweets, seriously? that millennial monopoly. It's all one big stereotype. You think millennials like not having money or being able to buy a house? Right on the mark, Hasbro, you idiots. Steven adds, Hasbro, can you provide the URL for the Hasbro official website featuring Monopoly for Millennials? Will you trash on my age demographic because baby boomers caused an economic catastrophe that rendered us financially impotent for a decade? Thanks! Almost more lazy than all the stereotypes is the joke that a lot of people are making on Twitter, which basically runs along the lines of, Millennials getting upset about Monopoly for Millennials is pretty much peak meta-millennial. Upset? Millennials? I wonder why? Could it be the rise of the alt-right, the housing crisis, or maybe the impending environmental crisis? Ironically, a lot of the stops on the board actually relate to all these issues. If we're increasingly choose to dine at vegetarian bistros, shop at thrift stores, or use bike shares, it's maybe because we don't want our planet to die. If we're crashing in our parents' basements or friends' couches, perhaps it's something to do with the fact that us millennials are reportedly half as likely to own a home at the age of 30 as our baby boomer parents. Trivializing these things isn't just a cheap shot, it's also a really crap joke. You're not not funny, hun. What would Twilight look like if it was set in 2018? The first film with the famous vampire saga came out exactly 10 years ago, in 2008, a time before Instagram, hashtag me too, and contouring. Suffice to say, if it was set now, things would be very different. How? For starters, Bella would not be having any of Edward's Sorry to all you hashtag Team Edwards, but here's the ultimate boy. He's all like, I'm not good for you, but then leads her on regardless. This is the last time you'll ever see me. Please just promise me you won't do anything reckless. He's constantly going on about how hard it is to control his primal urges, but still never puts out. Plus, he's got a huge collection of vinyl. If Twilight was set in 2018, Bella would tell him to stop screwing her around. She'd tell him to either give her a bit of action or stop booty calling her, and she'd make him get Spotify. Secondly, vampires constantly repeating high school just wouldn't work in the age of social media. Obviously, they can't have a digital blueprint because then people would cotton on to the fact that they literally never age. But also, dating someone Someone with absolutely no social media history is a huge red flag. Thank you. Next. Thirdly, one would hope that in 2018 the Forbes community wouldn't marginalize Jacob's Native American tribe to the extent that they do in the films. But then again, we're currently living in Trump's America, and he's out here mocking Elizabeth Warren, a Democratic senator with Native American heritage, by calling her Pocahontas. Is it offensive? You tell me. Oh. Finally, the Cullens would have to really up their contouring game. In 2008, we were still riding the wave of the emo. Pale skin, sweeping fringes, and very sullen expressions. But 2018 is all about the healthy glow. On the plus side, at least the Cullens would be able to go out into the sun. Everyone would just assume they'd gone ham on the highlighter. Ariana Grande has called out a male presenter of a breakfast show after he condemned Little Mix for their latest singles cover art. Yeah. The shot for their single strip features the girls naked with their bodies covered in insults, reclaiming all the crap hurled their way on a daily basis. Missing the point entirely, Susanna Reid's co-host tweets, I just prefer they use their talent to sell records rather than their nudity. Look, if it's what a man prefers, ladies. When we called him out for his double standards, he retweeted our piece with the comment, why is it misogynistic to suggest female pop stars with millions of young fans shouldn't use nudity to sell records? Okay, peers, here's why. You're suggesting that women are simply here to be sexualized, that our boobs or bare skin exist purely to be objectified under the male gaze. Little Mix's video is about a bunch of women in all ages, shapes, sizes, and colors dancing around, enjoying their bodies, ignoring the haters, and having a bit of fun. Yet while our bodies aren't purely sexual, on the flip side, women shouldn't be condemned when they do choose to assert their sexuality on their own terms. But they are. A lot. Just this week, Kim Kardashian admitted on Ellen that Kanye doesn't like it when she posts sexy pictures. Cheryl released a statement 
statement defending her recent X Factor performance after backlash that it was too raunchy. Double bad points because she's a mum. And everyone knows mums are only good for cooking and washing skin marks out of their oily teenage son's Fortnite boxes. Little Mix have also been slammed in the past for wearing leotards on X Factor. Meanwhile, dudes, even the same dudes calling out women for showing their body, are putting pictures like this into the world. Unclear whether he's endorsing perfume or the world's most effective contraception. As Ari says, I use my talent and my sexuality all the time because I choose to. Women can be sexual and talented, naked and dignified. It's our choice and we will keep fighting till people understand. I say this with all due respect, but thank you.